So I, I was listening to a few of the other sessions, and it was interesting conversations about modernizing technology. You know, one of the things that, that we're seeing with customers, especially with ransomware, is a lot of the bad actors are taking advantage of the old technology and getting in, you know, that's not being modernized. So it's kind of this all this legacy te tech debt that's out there. You know, we have customers that say, can you support these types of databases like Informix and things like that that haven't had security patches for years? And so, I mean, it's an interesting conversation. I mean, a lot of customers live in the old world, and that's where the bad actors are kind of, are kind of focused. So, but CyberSense is a product from Index Engines. Uh, we are really focused on the cybersecurity space and, and really looking at the data. I mean, it's really adding value to storage, adding value to backup to make sure that the data is not being corrupted and the data has integrity. Uh, my name is Jim McGann, as you can see. Um, I'm responsible for partnerships at Index Engines. I've been with the company since 2004, so, so quite a while. And I'll be taking you through the presentation. I do have Ed Moke on the standby He's virtually, so he may uh, jump in with some of these questions if they get beyond me. So a little bit about us. Um, we're focused on data intelligence, adding intelligence to data. Uh, at an enterprise scale level. One of our unique claim to fame is that we can index directly backup images. So a lot of data that's, that's important in the enterprise is protected through backup. And the fact that our technology can scan inside these images without rehydrating it allows it to do a number of different things to those to the backups. And that's important and it will be uh, discussed as we talk about some of the implementations. Um, so enterprise indexing has been around for a while. You know, what's the use case? So we lived a number of years in the legal discovery, discovery, GDPR space, um, which was successful for us. But the ransomware space is really where we're seeing customers are embracing um, you know, new data manage management strategies, um, being forced to really check the integrity of data. So it's, it's been a, a, a big area of, of growth for us. And we launched this product in 2018, so it's fairly new, but we've been around since 2004. Um, we bring this to the market through partners. Um, the product itself, customers are asking it to be tightly integrated with their storage, their backup storage targets, their backup environments, and their protected data environments. So we bring it through partners. We'll talk about some of the partnerships that we have. Um, People-wise, we're located in New Jersey. Uh, we have locations in Colorado and the UK. Uh, we just um, hired a, a big group of developers from the old Pavilion data that went out of business. So we now have an office in San Jose and Pune, India. So that was a, that was a great, um, great growth for us. So what, we, what we're providing really is intelligence for the enterprise data. So you guys were talking earlier about developers building storage applications and so on. So we layer on top of the different applications. We're not backup, we're not storage. We are software that sits on top of these environments and adds a layer of intelligence. So the product family really stretches from very high level metadata you know, very simple stuff you can use for tiering classification to analytics, which is really the heart of cyber sense, to full content, which is if you need to do, um, you know, governance or regulatory kind of stuff. So there's a wide range of different technologies. The bulk of what we've been doing the past couple of years has been the cyber sense product for obvious reasons. If you can't go a day without reading the news and seeing about ransomware. So the way we position it is that we add value to data resiliency. And a lot of the storage vendors talk about storage resiliency or data resiliency, you know, but they're not really inspecting inside the content. You know, is that data clean from ransomware corruption? They can't answer those questions. Um, or data security, are your backups, um, is there dormant malware sitting in your backups? Um, data risk, are there sensitive files that are there for, you know, that could be used for exfiltration? I mean, a lot of what you're seeing the bad actors are doing today is just grabbing the most sensitive content and threatening to publish it out on a wiki. There's, you know, we, we've seen them where they go in, they'll find the cyber insurance policy at the organization, know how much they're insured for, and magically ask them for that as a ransom. So uh -huh. they're not stupid. They're very smart. They're business people that happen to be very good technologists. Um, and then add value to data management, what data could be purged and cleaned and, and so on. So it's not, we're not, defining those terms, we're just adding value to those terms. So in terms of install base, we have about a little over a thousand customers globally sold through partners. Um, mostly the, the industries that you would suspect that are being attacked by ransomware, healthcare, government, finance, um, th those are the, the likely targets. Um, the range of customers 
has been anywhere from a terabyte, small school systems and so on, to 40 plus petabytes of data. So, you know, one of the questions we ask customers or our partners ask customers is, what data do you want to run analytics on that, that is critical, mission critical to get the business up and running? And they're like, all of it, <laughs> you know, a lot of it. And it's, you know, which is a challenge. You know, when we first architected the system, we were, our partners were saying, you know, 100 terabytes would be a max that they'd put in these, you know, cyber vaults. Hmm. Um, that's been blowing the doors off that. So it's really, you know, customers saying that, you know, you can check the integrity of this data. We'll, you know, just get everything as you can in there. So, which is good if you're a storage vendor. So in terms of the technology, um, we're an indexing platform, hence the name of the company. Um, we really architected it from the ground up to really uh, support large scale environments, which has really been one of the, the key benefits of what we're doing today. So it does support petabyte class environments. It's not built using any open source technology. It's built from scratch. Um, so we have speeds. In, it depends on the environment speeds of indexing running from a, a terabyte per hour per node to 18 plus terabytes per hour per node. And you can have federated environments for larger, larger footprints. And the unique ability that we have is the ability to support um, scanning of the backup images. So the Dell, IBM, Commvault, and Veritas images are scanned directly without rehydrating those formats. So in an environment where you put a backup image in an isolated vault, you know, the best practices don't rehydrate that so any malware can scan any further. That's where we come to play. We can go on there, mount to it, scan it directly without any kind of um, rehydration of the data. So we, we have, we spend a lot of time on integration. So we, we don't, we're not a backup software. People are like, well, are you gonna recover the data that's bad? I mean, we, we, we partner with the backup software vendors. We're not a backup software technology. What we are is a integration component that can integrate into these environments, whether it be, you know, flash storage environments, whether it be backup images and tightly integrate. And the integration is important because one of the scale of the data that's being analyzed, when you're in petabyte environments, you know, you need to have high performance, but also the orchestration that needs to happen. So when there's replication of the data, if they're applying any kind of immutability or retention lock on the data, that has to happen first, and then the data is presented to CyberSense for scanning. So the, the integration with these partners is very important. So we have a software development kit that allows for that. So Jim, you mentioned that um, speed-wise, performance-wise, one terabyte per hour to 18 terabytes per hour, and that's full content indexing? Uh, no, well, yeah, so with CyberSense, it's looking inside files and databases. So it's full content. It doesn't keep the words. So it's not keeping all the words that are in there. It's just using that. It creates a document signature for the file, but it, it throws away the words. So yeah, so it is it is technically full content indexing, but. Um, so so based, so based continuing with the performance conversation though. So since you're not actually rehydrating, are you getting that through multiple streams against that data? And um, you know what does the infrastructure around that, because your nodes are outside of that backup software, what, what does that infrastructure really have to look well, like? Well, you can, you can have multiple servers. You know, we have customers with you know, 10, 12 or more servers that are running in parallel. Okay. But when, once you get past the full scan of the data, it's really keeping up to a steady state, which is look, doing the incremental change rate, you know, which is like 2 or 3% on a daily basis and looking at what's changing. But what type so, of containers can you look inside of? Like, like what files? Like VMDKs, we can look inside those. Okay. We can look inside the backup images. Look inside. What file systems do you understand? It, you know, any of the files that are there, we're looking at, at you know, office files or any kind well, of tech files. I mean, do yeah. you, you look like NTFS and XTFS and what other? Yeah. Ed, I'm going to pass to you here. Yeah. So in terms of, let me, in terms of speed and functionality, what we're doing is we're indexing multiple streams of data anywhere. And we look at the resources available to us and indexing backups, multiple backups at the same time at network speeds in flight. Um, in terms of the containers, you know, we, we do all, as Jim said, any of the VMware or Hyper-V uh, virtual containers. Um, we do file systems for NTF file systems, XDF file systems uh, for, for Linux, as well as Windows file systems as well. All the major file system formats on both the Linux and Windows environments, Unix environments. Okay, yeah. thanks. I mean, that's, that's part of the challenge is, you know, we have to, you know, a lot of customers, you know, want different data sources. Like, you know, I mentioned Informix, they're like, well, can you do scans of Informix? And it's like, you know, a lot of people don't run that anymore. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, you know, the challenge you guys were talking about, you know, 
innovating and adding new capabilities. A lot of this stuff and a lot of where the bad actors are going is to the legacy stuff that's not really have any security patches or hasn't been updated or customers really just don't think about. And that's part of the challenge with customers is you're not going to solve this problem until you really you know, modernize your data center, which is, you know, if you've got stuff running on Informix databases for decades, that's a big, it's a big ask. So Jim, um, so what, rather than actually indexing the, the files themselves, you're doing sort of a, a scan to try to come up with a, like a hash or something like that and, and using that in, in, a, in a way to verify that it hasn't been changed? Well, we're, we're going to get into that, but uh, do you want to make a quick comment here? So you... So we're, we're actually indexing the content of the files. We're just not saving the words within the files, but the full file, you know, we're, we're reading the header of the file, understanding the type of file, reading the blocks in the file, every single byte within the file. Um, and then looking at the structure of the, the files, doing deep level integrity checking, which Jim is going to get into here shortly. Yep. But we are indexing the content of the file. We do capture the signature of the file. We also capture, um, you know, we, we chunk the file up and do uh, calculations, signature calculations on the various subcomponents of the files as well when we, uh, when we do our analysis. So I'll let Jim get into yep. that in, in a couple of seconds. Get a little further. Okay. Right? Thanks. Um, so one of our one of our main partners and one of our key partners is Dell. Dell has deployed this um, since about 2018 as their cyber recovery vault. It's their isolated air gapped uh, product that's been on the market. Um, they have obviously data domain running as as their uh, data protection appliance in the data center. They create an automated um, air gap that air gaps it off the network and puts it in an isolated vault. So data is replicated into that vault. Um, all the orchestration has been built here. They just replicate it on a daily basis into the vault. They applied their um, immutability on it, their retention lock. Then they um, allow CyberSense to mount to that data to scan the content that's in there. And then if there's any kind of suspicious activity, alerts go back to their dashboard and they can execute a recovery based on the information that we'll talk about in terms of what CyberSense uh, presents. This is sold very well. I mean, they, they've got you know thousands of customers globally using this today. There's a number of customers that have had attacks and have recovered um, very successfully with this. So it is it is probably more the state of the art. The interesting thing that Dell did, and you know, a lot of the backup vendors that are out there have just added on capabilities to their backup software and called it a day. You know, checkbox that we're now a cyber recovery versus a disaster recovery product. Uh, Dell built this from the ground up, really re-architected this. I mean, they use data domain just because of the compression and the speed to be able to replicate. Um, it's a mature technology. Um, in the vault is obviously different, all the different backup formats that they support, you know, Veritas, Commvault, IBM, Spec, uh, uh, whatever it's called, Spectrum Protect is the old name. Um, <laughs> but th that's all, you know, they use all those different backup formats in there. So it's, it's, it's done very well. And the customers have really feel this is the, you know, kind of the, the gold standard in terms of protecting data. Quick question, uh, the, sl the slide before, I don't go back to it, but the slide before you said it had about a thousand plus global customers, mm -hmm. and here you just said Dell had thousands. So with it, is it, yeah. you don't count those among your thousand? There, no, the, the, these are definitely counted as part of those. A majority of the thousand plus are, are Dell customers. Okay. They, uh, there's probably a 50 to 60% attach rate of CyberSense to the vaults that Dell sure. is selling. Some environments are not supported in there, so Dell does support Veeam, in the vault, but um, CyberSense does not support Veeam. That's not a technical decision, that's a business decision that Dell has made. So Jim, here's a question for you. Uh, obviously, object storage, file storage, that kind of stuff is really crucial. <laughs> what about database or block level storage? I'm thinking things like Oracle RMAN, SQL Server Backup. Right. Is that something that Right. Organizations are actually using to scan. So we're looking at the backup images, and inside those backup images is an Oracle database. And, right. and, and CyberSense will scan that database, SQL, Oracle, okay. SAP HANA, um, Epic, Iris, all those different ones. And, and fully okay. index the database. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll talk about in detail what we do. Store it. Excellent. But right. I'll store the data. Yeah. They're yeah. only hashing it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. The databases we're looking at, you know, we're just looking at the page headers and looking at signatures in the database, we're not looking at the content, because gotcha. what they're doing is they're doing a lot of encryption inside there. So it's the content doesn't necessarily matter, it's just the encryption is what's being looked at. So one very basic question, uh, what, what is the need of replicating this data to a different vault and then doing the indexing there? Why can't we index 
uh, do the index right in place? So another partnership that we have <laughs> is is uh, they're doing snapshots in production. Okay. So that that deployment is the Dell deployment. So they their their philosophy here is to get it out of um, the hands uh, and of any bad actor. So they have masking technology and stuff that nobody even knows that that vault exists. So that's in terms of cyber resiliency, that's kind of like what they consider the gold standard. This is another partner. Um, they they're not allowing us to announce who they are, but they're doing their flash storage. They're snapshotting data. Um, making copy of it, making it, locking it down, making it mutable, and then CyberSense is scanning it, and that's run. You know, the scans here in this case are happening every X minutes or so. So this is a different deployment. This runs this, production. This model makes more sense in terms of uh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, you know, Dell has done very well in selling that model in terms of if you're going to stand in front of your board of directors and and you know hold your hand up and say you know we're resilient, we can recover, we know the data is clean and good. The Dell deployment is kind of like the gold standard here. This is, you know, they, they this partner initially started with databases, you know, like SAP HANA, Ep, um, Epic, Iris, and others, because those are the production. They want to snap it every X minutes, run analytics, make sure it's good, and if it's bad, execute a recovery process. So yeah, I get into a, ph a philosophical argument of our snapshots back up, and we're not going to get into that here. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's the lunch conversation. So, yeah. So, th and the, the interesting thing with, with most of the Dell customers is the majority of the data that they're putting in the vault is databases, your Oracle and SQL databases. So, you know, you don't read a lot about that stuff being corrupted because that's, you know, people really don't want to say, hey, your insurance company's databases has been corrupted, but it's happening a lot. 